Working from the sanctuary back towards the choir loft, our first small symbol on the west wall is a cross with also an anchor there, and then we see a heart that looks like it has a flame on top. Uh, the heart, of course, represents the flaming heart of Jesus, alive with love for us. The cross, the place of victory, where his sacrifice of love has been shared. And the anchor can be a symbol of Christ, of hope, of salvation, sometimes also a symbol of the church. Uh, all of those hold us in place, like an anchor would hold a boat. And so when you see that in artwork, you know that it reminds us of the stability that we have, life lived in Christ, and of course sharing in his life through the sacraments in the church. Our next symbol is the empty cross, of course the cross of victory, the place where Jesus offered himself in sacrifice so that we could be set free from our sins. And you see at the top the inscription I-N-R-I, that's the inscription that Pontius Pilate had put on the top of the cross of Jesus. We see in John chapter 19, Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The I-N-R-I is the Latin abbreviation for Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. There is not a letter J in the Latin language, so we see I there. That stands for Jesus, and then at the end, the Jewish people. N for Nazarene, R for Rex, for the king. Above the window of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and St. Margaret Mary is a symbol that depicts a heart that is pierced with a sword, we also see there a wreath of lilies and roses. The heart pierced by the sword is a representation of Mary's heart. We go back to the Gospel of St. Luke in chapter 2, part of the prophecy of Simeon. In verse 35, he said, And a sword will pierce through your own soul, or sometimes it's translated your own heart, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Traditionally, the seven sorrows of Mary are this one, the prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt when they had to escape from Herod, who was searching for Jesus, the loss of the boy Jesus in the temple when Mary and Joseph could not find him, then the meeting of Jesus on the way of the cross when Mary saw him carrying his cross, the crucifixion of Jesus when Jesus was taken down from the cross and placed in the arms of Mary, and then his burial, the seven sorrows of Mary. See also in the window symbol, the wreath of lilies, and I think roses are there. Of course, those symbolize uh, life, holiness, and purity. Those are reminders of the goodness of Mary, even in the midst of suffering. Our next small symbol depicts once again the cross, the sign of victory of the resurrection, and also trumpets. Trumpets in our symbolism can re represent judgment day or resurrection or call to worship. I think depicted here with the cross, it is an announcement of the resurrection, the victory that Jesus has won over sin and death. This window depicts the letters IHS, which is probably one of our most common symbols or sacred monograms that we see depicted in our artwork. It's an abbreviation that was really popularized by St. Bernadine of Siena, and it has been interpreted in many different ways over time. The first three letters of the name of Jesus Christ in Greek are these capital letters, I-H-S. It's also been interpreted in Greek as a phrase, which means Jesus, our Savior. It's also been interpreted a couple of ways in Latin, Jesus, Savior of humankind, Jesus, Savior of man. Uh, in this cross is salvation, or in this sign, we will conquer. 
Uh, all of those are ways to read different representations of those letters IHS. Of course, all of them call to mind that Jesus is our Savior, uh, that he is true God and true man who has given himself for us, and it is because of that that we have that opportunity to join with his victory. Depicted above the window of Our Lady of Lords and St. Bernadette is this cross with a crown. Of course, the cross recalls the salvation that Jesus has offered by giving of himself, sacrificing himself so that we could be free. The crown is a symbol of victory. Uh, the champion is crowned. And so we see the crown with the cross reminds us that Jesus by his sacrifice, has earned the victory of the resurrection and the opening of the gates of heaven for our salvation. Jesus Christ is the king. and He is appropriately crowned the king of victory. This symbol depicts a chalice with grapes at the top. Of course, the chalice is a symbol of the Eucharist and also of worship and faith. When we see the chalice, we think of the Mass and of course, the grapes on the top recall that the wine, which is used for the Mass, which during the consecration becomes true body and blood of Christ, is made from the grapes. So the chalice with the grapes, uh, sometimes you'll also see wheat as well, is a symbol of the Eucharist. Our last small symbol on the west side are a collection of lilies some of which are open and some are closed. The lily is a symbol of innocence and purity of holiness. It is the sign of Easter and the resurrection. The fact that some of the lilies are open and some are closed remind me of a story that I heard about St. Therese of Lisieux called the Little Flower. She once had designed a vestment for the priest to wear at Mass and on it, the decorations had a number of lilies, some that were open and some that were not open. When people asked her about the design, she said that the open lilies stand for her sisters and for herself, and the unopened blooms stand for her siblings that died in infancy. She said that God did not wish for those blooms to open on earth so that he could enjoy them in full bloom forever in heaven. I think it's such a beautiful statement of faith and love. When we see the lilies, we are reminded of the holiness and the purity of Jesus, of Mary, of the saints. We are reminded of the joy of the resurrection, and we're reminded of the hope for the kingdom of heaven.